Hello everyone. Welcome to our、uh, webinar of PCR Tokyo Barbs. So, my name is Yusuke Watanabe,、uh, International Cardiologist from Japan. So, today、uh, we want to talk about、uh, contemporary appraisal of functional mitral regurgitation in the transcatheter era. So, I want to、uh, introduce my、uh, colleagues. So, Dr. Alex Lee from Hong Kong. And Dr. Didier Cheche from、uh, France, and Dr. Adam Sang from、uh, Taiwan. So, today's、uh, learning objectives is、uh, to learn、uh, what the data tells about the patient selection for、uh, transcatheter edge to edge repair, and to discuss、uh, TER in complex functional mitral regurgitation scenarios. And also to understand which patient could be treated with transcatheter mitral valve replacement. So let's go to the、uh, case presentation. So, Adam,、uh, please.、Uh, thanks, Yusuke, for the kind introduction. And it's my pleasure to join this meeting、uh, to present the, the, the case of the functional MR. And here is our case a 70. Three years old gentleman with body mass index of 29. The patient h a v e mobility of non ischemia heart failure, diabetes, and stage three chronic kidney disease, and also、uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. The patient presented、uh, at the very first beginning with heart failure aspiration in 2020. And that time, she was told to have moderate to severe mitral regurgitation and also the moderate tricuspid regurgitation. And the patient was put on heart failure、uh, GDMT. And because of the low, relative low blood pressure and、uh, also heart rate, the mass motor b o d o s e we include the b i s o p r o l o 2.5 mg and spironolactone 25 mg, d a p a g l y p h o s i n and also f e r o s a m i d e And from the right hand side, you may、uh, see that the patient actually h a v e progressive dilated left, vent left ventricle. With、uh, at the very first beginning, left ventricular、uh, and systolic dimension、uh, 64 until now, at least here is 70. The patient did not have improvement in LV ejection fraction and the MR severity remained moderate to severe. And here is the, the index、uh, hospitalization who, who、uh, the patient presented with pulmonary edema. And after、uh, diuretics, and we turn the Uvolumab status, the patient has creatinine 1.6, BMP antiprobamy 2,200, and also、uh, normal hemoglobin level. The ECG was narrow QIs, and the heart is dilated, fully is really dilated, and also、um, lev dilated left ventricle. And by the、uh, images studies the, with the TEE, The heat demonstrated the patient h a v e a central uh, functional, uh, severe functional MR. And by the X plan, you may、uh, observe that there is a gap uh, 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 between at the lateral A to P2 region. So the mitral valve area is good, is good enough, 7.1, and the PL, PMLO、uh, lens is、uh, over 15 millimeter, and the co occasion gap at the lateral A to P2 region is 2.9 millimeter. And、uh, the patient h a v e reverse pulmonary flow at the、uh, pulmonary vein, indicates severe、uh, functional, severe mitral regurgitation. The r a h a s h o w i n g that the patient, after diuretic therapy, the wedge pressure is not high and the pulmonary artery pressure is 21. The patient h a v e normal coronary angiogram. So, yes,、uh, according to the、uh, heart failure uh, uh, risk coding, The Seattle heart failure model indicated a patient would have one year mortality rate of 10. Major risk score i n d i c a t e one year mortality is uh, uh, 34%. And also, with the co op risk score seven, the patient would have two year mortality in hospital aspiration of more than 80%. So, this is the, the gap of the image that the patient h a v e the largest gap at the lateral A to P2 region. So, here is the case. Okay, thank you, Adam. So, we want to discuss about this case. So, I want to ask、uh, to Alex. So, do you think、uh, it is,、uh, this patient is a good candidate for mitral clip 
uh, in terms of mitral anatomy and also the、uh, patient background. Right, thanks,、uh, Watanabe. I think the, the mitral anatomy is feasible, it's suitable for、uh, tear therapy. There are some favorable factors and some unfavorable factors, I think, in this case. The favorable factors is that it's a central jet. Uh, and it's the, the mitral valve orifice area, it's, it's big to begin with, so it allows more room to implant more clips if it's needed.、Uh, the unfavorable factor is, I think, is there's i a gap,、uh, and also there is a quite a significant tethering、uh, from what I look at on the echo. So these are the things that may make a、uh, uh, tear a bit challenging, but it, I think it's a doable case. Thank you. Okay, how, how about、uh, the patient background? Yeah, I think the patient background is t s i t i s definitely uh, a uh, indication for tear because he has other comorbidities like chronic kidney disease, lung disease. Surgery is, is probably not a good option, and his coronaries are definitely、uh, doable with PCI.、Uh, the LV is a bit dilated,、uh, stepping into the mitral FR kind of zone of LV and systolic dimension of 70 millimeter. But I think uh, uh, it's uh, with the other, all the factors considered together, I think、uh, the clinical, clinically, he is also a suitable candidate for a tear.、Uh, it has been shown in the COAP trial that this kind of patient will have uh, uh, improved outcomes in terms of the quality of life and symptoms and also the long term survival and heart failure hospitalization. Thank you very much. So I want to ask to Adam so, so this patient, especially this patient, do you target? When you do the mitral clip, for which point of the transseptal、uh, puncture? Yes,、uh, regarding、uh, treating the patient with a function MR, a majority of, because the majority of the cooptation would be at the, below the annulus. So、uh, the four centimeter high would be good enough. But if we let it specific for function MR with tethering, but if we have treated For example, the atrium function of MR because the cooptation actually is at the level of annulus. And therefore, over 4.2 or even 4.5 centimeters would be suitable. And for function of MR, if the tentin high is too, depth, too deep and maybe a too high puncture would result in, in、uh, uh, not, would increase the difficulty to manipulation. So if you have over 5 centimeters for patients who have very dilated LV, And then you have to、uh, you know, introduce the CDS very deep into the left ventricle, and then you would not be able to, you know, you would increase the difficulty to operate the system. Thank you. So, in Asian patients, sometimes we face a very small, tiny size of a patient. So, that's pa such a patient has a small、uh, left atrial size, and sometimes we cannot have a distance from.、Uh, Annulus to、uh, puncture point over four c e n t i m e t e r How about this case? And、uh, do, do you experience such a、uh, small, small LA to atrium patient? Yes, yes, that is really a very good question and actually very、uh, challenging situation. We also have、uh, ever treat p a t i e n t with acute, acute m a l g a n infarction and post infarction severe function MR. The LA is not dilated. But for the mitral clip system with the short arm、uh, NT or NTW, the 3.5, I think we, can, we are able to manipulate to do the、uh, mitral clip. And with the long arm system, the XT or XTW, we probably need 3.8, 3.5, 3.8. you do the steering to the CDS into、uh, project to the left ventricle, probably the tip or even. The low part of the, the clip would be d i v e into the beyond the, the annulus, but still we can operate that. But that is also a very difficult situation. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so I want to have a next question to Didier. So,、mm. for the first clip, which size of the mitral clip G4 system do you choose、uh, for this patient? Yeah, Yusuke, that's a very、uh, key aspect of the procedure because now we have four available f o r m i t r o c l i p sizes. We have the NT, NT wide, XT, and XT wide. So the idea is to really, as you said, try to tailor the、uh, type of device to the anatomy of the patient. And here we have a 
functional, very uh, complex functional mitral regurgitation with a, a very important tethering of the uh, mitral leaflets. We have that gap. And uh, so my personal choice would be to use a first a clip with longer arm. So it's going to be an XT. XT that is uh, like when it's closed, it's 20, when it's fully open, it's 22 millimeters. So it should be uh, able to accommodate above the anterior and the posterior leaflet particularly because the posterior leaflet is more than 10 millimeters, so an XT makes, makes, a, makes a, a sense. And then uh, in terms of width, it would be a W because we have that gap. We have a very large uh, cooptation gap. So using a uh, mitroclip XT W for this particular patient would be uh, my first choice. Uh, if we go a bit further, if uh, when do we utilize an NT? And T, it's more when we don't have that A2P2 uh, location of the mitral regurgitation, where we are more commissural. When the mitral, uh, posterior mitral leaflet is le less than 10, and when we have calcium at the, the level of the mitral annulus, we may uh, favor NT. So for this particular patient, XT white would be my choice. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's uh, very understandable. So how about uh, the point, uh, this point, uh, Alex, please? Yeah. Same as the uh, Yeah. So the number of clips that uh, we may need to implant, right? Yeah. The question is, I think uh, for this case, if you look at the echo on the, uh, we can assess the mitral regression jet width. And it's best assessed on the uh, bicommissural view, the 60 degree views, where you can see uh, the, the jet width. And uh, it's also can be appreciated very nicely on 3D echo and turn on the color, Doppler cut through echo assess the jet width. And in this case, you can see the jet width is very large because it's it span whole uh, uh, zone to A2P2 region, almost approach, uh, uh, approaching the, uh, the, the, the peripheral, the A1 and the uh, A3 zone. Uh, so it's a very wide jet. If you measure it, I think it probably is more than 1.5 centimeters. So I doubt that this will be a uh, two clip case. But I, I have to say it's kind of, sometimes it's really difficult to, to predict whether it's a one clip or two clip case. So I think our strategy is that anticipating it would, could be a two clip case. And probably uh, as a Didier point out, we will also try uh, favoring using XTW in this scenario. And then we probably will put the first clip uh, at the center first to see whether that clip can solve the problem. If not, then we'll adjust the uh, uh, location of that clip uh, to, 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 and then aiming for putting a second clip. And uh, I think, and, and I think that's repeat this approach. Of course, uh, we, when we're considering the number of clips, we have to consider another factor, which is the baseline mitral orifice area. So if it's, if it's borderline case, like uh, four centimeters square or uh, even less, then that it can only be a one clip case. But for this case, it's a seven centimeters square at the beginning with, so, so I think uh, probably we can do two clips and probably two clips will give a more optimal outcome. Oh, thank you very much. So maybe we need two clips for this specific patient. So Alex, I want to ask one more question. So uh, in your practice, so how many patients do you have a second clip such a, uh, in, in case of the FMR case? Uh, Average uh, clips for, for your experience. Well, I think re very roughly, maybe uh, fifty percent, forty percent cases we need uh, two clips for our own in our own patient population experience. Uh, especially most of it in, in in the past when we don't have the, uh, uh, the four clip size to choose, when we only have the narrow clips, uh, then uh, it's more common that we may need to use two clips. But now with the uh, wider clips, uh, I think more frequently we're able to we able to use just one clip, uh, the wide clips, either it's NT or XT wide clips to soft. So I think roughly in you know, experience, um, fifty or sixty percent will be one clip, but forty percent so will be two clips for FMR. For DMR, definitely depending on how extensive the prolapse is, we will probably will use more clips. So that's our experience. Thank you. So uh, I want to ask Adam. So uh, we have a uh, we Asian patient. It's a very uh, sometimes face very small size of mitral valve area. 
So such kind of cases, may,、uh, when you use XW,、uh, gradient will sometimes will be very high. Do you have such, such an experience? Yes, but in patients with、uh, relatively small mitral valve annulus, I would prefer to not to use the long arm clip, given that what you,、uh, what you have already said that the patient might encounter、uh, you know, very uh, uh, increase in, in the transmitral valve ratio gradient. So for patients with acute、uh, functional MR, I would prefer to have a、uh, uh, A small、uh, short arm、um, clip system, and then to figure out whether what, what we need one or two clips. My personal belief that when we're using the long arm clip, because we increase the coptation area and the mitral valve area reduction, the trade off would be much prominent than using the short arm clip. So that is if a patient with acute conditions, small mitral valve area, small clip is my choice. Okay, so. Uh, how many patients、uh, do you use、uh, XW、uh, for、X、FMR? Yes, that is,、uh, that is a very interesting question, Yusuke. And also, I have the same question、um, for, for Didi because Didi has a t e l patient with long leaflet. He would prefer to have a long arm clip. For this patient, because the long A long leaflet lens, so I prefer XTW as the first because using the W, the Y clip, which might not increase too much tension on the leaflet, and then we can, I can decide whether or not I need a second tip. And for majority of the function, I would prefer、uh, if the mitral valve area is not an issue, I would prefer to have two clip、uh, in a strategy, given that the patient might not really can get LV recovery. Uh, re remodeling, reverse remodeling after the much,、uh, tier procedure. So, if some patient might possible getting a progressive dilatation, I think the two、uh, clip strategy might prevent further、uh, you know, recurrence of mitral regurgitation at A to P2 region. So, therefore, my default strategy for functional MR for、uh, you know, enough mitral valve、uh, area, I would use two clip strategy. And regarding the long arm clip, I would I personally pre prefer if the patient h a v e very tethering leaflet and also the, the long、uh, leaflet, I would prefer XTW as the first. But if the patient d i d not really tethering, and that which means I would calculate because according to publication,、uh, index, so called leaflet to annual index, might not relate to, to the outcome. But if the leaflet to annual is, is quite short, it's less than 1.2. Which means that if I use the long arm clip, which might increase the, the lip a t t e n t i o n too much. So, in that moment, I would prefer to、uh, use the short arm clip to avoid the lip a t t e n t i o n to avoid the tear of the lip blade. So, I don't know. I also have a question for Didi. When would you prefer to use the short arm clip if the patient really indeed h a v e a long、uh, lip blade lens? Yeah, that's really、uh, a daily practice、uh, con concern. And I When we are facing a functional mitral regurgitation, most of the time we are using a longer arm clip.、Uh, yeah, when we are facing functional mitral regurgitation, most of the time it's、uh, XT or XTW.、Uh, so, but sometimes you,、uh, you start with one clip and then you get a high gradient. And、uh, I like your strategy of not inserting the full length of the above the anterior and the posterior leaflet within the XT or XT wide. Just to decrease the tension on the leaflet.、Uh, it may be a nervous strategy rather than using a shorter clip that may be more challenging、uh, to grasp appropriately the leaflet. You could use a longer one with the wider,、uh, the longer arms and apply less tension.、Uh, insert a bit, a bit less、uh, leaflets within the, the XT or XTW just to decrease the tension, the overall tension. So that is a strategy that I like, and I think that's a very important、uh, trick that we may provide to the audience just to. Uh, first, respect the leaflets, avoid to tear them, to damage them, and a second, to avoid to get a too high increase in terms of gradient.、Uh, so, for FMR, most of the time I systematically start with XT or XTW, and then it's more about tailoring the amount of leaflet that we can insert inside、uh, just to make sure that we、uh, respect the leaflets and we don't damage them. Thank you, Didier. Very important point. So, I want to ask also DDA. So, this, this patient has a very large、uh, 
virus is very long virus of the mitral regurgitation area. So do you prefer to uh, grasp uh, central first or some, some, some doctor do zipping technique like uh, medial to lateral uh, zipping technique? So which yeah. prefer to Yes, so that's a, a, once again a very uh, important technical concern, and most of the time, I have to say that, like uh, Alex has proposed, I would start uh, A2P2 and just try to uh, analyze what is the effect on the jet. Do I split the jet? Is there a more important residual jet, medial or lateral? If you have uh, no residual uh, jet major when you go central, you may leave it as it is. If you have a very important or significant medial jet, you may move a bit more medially your XT, XCW, or NTW, depending on your patient, and then go for a second clip and more is zipping technique. You have to take into consideration the gradient that you're going to generate. So I have to say that it's a, it's a trade-off. But starting central most of the time works and it's uh, it should be it could be the first step and then moving a bit lateral or medial most of the time it's more medial because it's easier to start medial and then to go more central for the subsequent clips rather than trying to put a second or a third clip more medial it's going to be more challenging so i would start a to p2 assess if it's not enough move medial and put the other clips more central Thank you very much. So maybe it's a time to go into the uh, video. Yes, just what we have discussed about uh, the puncture high for this patient with uh, the left atrium is good, is large, so and therefore we can get a height of four point five centimeter. And for the the device, I, I think that is that is fine for for the mitral clip to do using the XTW as uh, uh, arm. And before the uh, procedure, we will further evaluate the mitral nerve anatomy to see whether the gap remains. Like comparing, we we all I think we all have uh, the same experience that when pay functional patient put on general anesthesia and the MR severity might be uh, drop and uh, might be improved after general anesthesia, maybe due to dehydrate, dehydration or related to the anesthesia related vasodilatation. I don't know whether or not you have the same experience that you have to, when you so see the MR, probably in my MRI after anesthesia, would you further, con will still go to conduct the mitral uh, tear procedure. But the patient actually have the similar uh, anatomy as the before the anesthesia, and this is the trichotomy restriction, it's mild. So comparing to the previous transthoracic echo, it's moderate. So that is mild. So we don't need to treat the, the trichotomy restriction. So this is a XTW system. And we aim to, firstly, we prefer uh, aim at the medial A2P2 region because majority of the testing would be more severe at the medial uh, A2P2, and therefore, given the patient have remain have have uh, mitral research jet arising from the uh, the the medial uh, indentation zone, so I think with the long arm clip and 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 target at the medial A2P2, we probably are able to uh, mitigate the the MR uh, arising from the the medial uh, indentation. So this is what we are doing the trajectory, and then uh, with the good trajectory, and then we would uh, you do to check the orientation. So therefore, we open the, 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 the clear arm, and also we can at this moment to check the the uh, the gripper uh, independent actuation, the function of gripper. So when we, I personally, we prefer to open the clip in a very wide. Angle. If the left atrium is large, I would prefer to have 180 degree that I can really uh, e uh, easy and precisely to assess the, the orientation related to the mitral valve anatomy. So if the clip is not really open, that sometimes the the, the, the orientation might not be really uh, precise. So I would personally prefer to open in a very wide uh, open the clear arm widely and then to to confirm the orientation 
and we know that apt for uh, functional MR, given the target is always at a central H2P duration. So this is a very typical orientation. When we get a good orientation, and therefore we can uh, do the diving to get to, to into the left ventricle. I would prefer to open the clip a bit, maybe a 60 degree, and then once we dive into the A2P2, and when the clip uh, decide, uh, dive beyond the leaflet tip, the, the tip of the anterior and posterior leaflet, we can further open the clip and then retreat tip the, the re withdraw the, the clip system, uh, CDS system, and then to try to at a uh, first big, uh, uh, try to grasp the leaflet. Uh, and uh, once we, we dive into the left ventricle, so we open the clip. And therefore, the, the, the image is very important. We open and we uh, pull back the CDS, and then we can see that you see the long arm system. It's quite uh, easy that we can have all stiffly on the clip arm. And after that, then we will check the orientation again. So it's remain uh, not change of the orientation uh, for A2P2. So this is central, a uh, media A2P2 region. So we see the both arm. We I prefer to you know, mag magnify the image to see the leaflet more clearly. And then before we lower the gripper. And at, once we lower the gripper, we see the tip, both uh, tip leaflet, the tip, uh, both tip are in the very deep, deep in the, in the arm. So, and therefore when we, uh, lower the gripper, we can sure assure that we have a very good grasping of the leg. And that therefore we probably not really need the to do the deep leg insertion uh, uh, leg insertion uh, assessment. So we see the both bounce inside of both leaf leg and therefore we can close the, leaf, the clip. And after that, well and we know that the long arm system we grasp um, uh, very uh, good enough a leaflet, but also uh, propose uh, tension on the leaflet to avoid a leaflet injury. While, while we close into the sixth degree, and then we will close uh, slowly and to avoid, uh, to put suddenly uh, in tension on the leaflet. So after the first clipping, we see, we will evaluate the residual MR on both sides of leaflet to see the etiology. So for the median indentation, a region the X plan we demonstrate is probably related to insufficient uh, cooptation at this region. But we see the both if they are has co-opted, and from the central part, and we see the insufficiency cooptation, and we believe that with additional uh, XT clip, we are able to mitigate abolish all the central MR. So for the for the uh, A2P region, therefore we decided to uh, do another XT uh, clipping. I, I I just wonder will uh, you guys uh, prefer to move the first clip more medially to mitigate the, the MR from the uh, uh, A2 uh, from the media indentation region? But my personally, I think with long arm, we we with the assessment of the the anatomy, I think that is good enough. And we will measure the pressure gland and it's about three. So three is fine. And we know that the patient actually have uh, a large mitral valve area. So with the good enough, with, with the lower, relative lower uh, mitral reach, uh, pressure gradient, we therefore go for the second clip. So it's two, it's two, two to three. So that is good. So, and therefore we go for, we like to go for the second. And this is the, the, the 3D on fast view, nicely demonstrated a double orifice opening of the, the mitral valve. And then, and the MR actually is quite trivial at the medial part. And with moderate MR, residual moderate MR and the A2P2 region. So let us go for the second clip. And the second clip is we can guide the second bit uh, trajectory by the four row. So actually the second bit is quite, uh, the, the, is quite much sim simple comparing to the first clip. So we check the trajectory and then we check the orientation and we decide we plan to a clip 
at the adjacent part of the first clip. So this is the XTW, uh, this is the, an XT, uh, uh, XT uh, clip. So we open and then check the orientation. And for the second clip, we know that to avoid the injury on the display, we will close the clip and then uh, advance to dive into the left ventricle. That is why we are checking the orientation. I prefer to open the clip widely and to, uh, we like to have more precisely orientation checked. And then we can go, go get into the left ventricle. And for this part, sometimes uh, if we, uh, the, the, you know, the heart motion, because during the uh, respiration cycle, uh, the heart might move, uh, might move. So if we, I would like to have a very precise diving, I would probably, we can, you know, reduce the title button or we can even hold the breeze and then to dive the clip. And after diving, we open the clip and we pull back and the deep level is probably already sitting on the both arms. And then we check the orientation again, and then we can close the clip to finish the procedure. So this is the orientation checking, and it did not change. It changed a bit, so we, we do a bit uh, rotation, and then followed by that, and we can do, uh, do the clipping. So after the second second clip, and usually the second clip will grasp all the leaflet, so it would not be a, an issue. But sometimes we just need to uh, avoid the interaction between the two clips. So that is also why we are at a we at a position before we. Uh, uh, go to the, uh, the uh, suitable position. I would relative do not put too much close to the first clip, but after we have the adequate height, I will move for, uh, a bit toward the first clip, and then we do the clipping. And after that, we have to check the the research, uh, residual MR as well as the transmitter block gradient. So from the two D uh, color images, I think the MR is trivial. So with the three D, we can also check the uh, we can also check the pressure gradient, and pressure gradient is fine. It's two to three it depends on the the cycle length of the heartbeat. So we, while we are treating uh, eliminate mitigate all the MR, the pressure gradient actually did not really went high, especially for a patient with large mitral valve area. And therefore, after that, we have to check the pulmonary band flow. We also have to check the, the in addition to the VLT for the left side pulmonary band. We will see that we don't, we have very good uh, flow. And without a six story reversal comparing to what we have assessed before the procedure. So this is the left side. And then we go for the right side. It's fine. A no real C-story reversal. And then after that, we probably can, you know, uh, deploy the clip. This is also the other right side. To check the right side from the van. At a 20 to 60 degree between 20 to 6. So for patients who have relative small mitral valve area, if we have a residual moderate uh, to mild to moderate MR, but the area we are not able to introduce a, a further clip, I think the primary vein reversal would be the best uh, you know, indicator that we probably can be, feel more comfortable to stop the procedure if the area mitral valve area is uh, mitral valve pressure gradient when high. So this is final. We uh, you know deploy the clip, and then check the 3D, a 2D image is tr trivial MR, and also we will check the 3D images uh, to see uh, the MR. I think the 3D color image actually is quite 
sensitive to define the, the trivial mild or moderate MR. If you see very trivial MR that you don't really, really worry about that. And this is what we left at the uh, medial uh, indentation region that the patient still have trivial MR at that. So that is the case. I finished with two clips. Thank you. Hi, thank you, Adam. Thank you, Adam. So very nice, very nice case. And uh, I want to uh, uh, thank you for your, this case. Very nice uh, demonstrative, uh, good case. Okay, congratulations and for your team and uh, yeah, your patient. So let's do, let's go into the uh, discussion part. So Alex, please. Uh, Start. Thank you. Thank you, Yusuke. Uh, excellent uh, case uh, and uh, terrific result, Adam. So um, I would like to uh, start the discussion by asking the first question to Yusuke. So this is the case that we need to clip. So um, what would be your personal strategy in, in terms of the pressure gradient after the first clip that you, you, you would say you would accept that you can proceed with the second clip? Thank you, Alex. So this case was perfect. It's uh, uh, just one millimercury for gradient. So I, I think it's acceptable uh, if the gradient after the first, first clip, uh, less than five is, is acceptable. But if it's uh, over five uh, millimercury gradient, so I will uh, change the position uh, to more closer to the uh, first uh, clip. If the second clip is too far uh, from uh, uh, first clip, gradient will be higher. So I think it's better to to move second clip to the closer to the first clip. But it's uh, uh, if we do the uh, closer uh, insertion of the second clip and uh, also have a gradient over five, uh, I I will change it to the ex, uh, Clip size to the XT to the NT mm. or smaller one. Mm. Maybe I will. So that's the, a decision, yeah. right? So that's a decision uh, after the clip implantation. What What about after implanting the first clip? There is still residual MR, right? Uh, and then and then you have to decide and you want to put in the second clip, but you have to assess the uh, the gradient after the first clip. So what's at that moment? What is the pressure gradient threshold that you think? Okay, it's probably uh, safe to implant the second clip? Is it like three or four or two that you, you think that, that, that the implanting the second clip is feasible? Because the decision has to be made after the first clip is implanted, mm -hmm. whether you, you, you try to implant the second clip. Proceed. So, okay. so what do you think? Okay, so yeah, thank you. So ideally it's uh, also yeah, three or four is okay, but five is, uh, I think it's a little bit high gradient. So. I will change a uh, first clip to more uh, medial or, or doing uh, grasping again to right. to have a, uh, yeah, to, to, to reduce the gradient. To reduce the gradient. Excellent. So my second question is to Adam. So can you share with us some of your tricks? How uh, is there any tricks in, in implanting the second clip? So we know that in the second clip, you have to be uh, very precise in terms of the um, in terms of the uh, uh, the position, right? And how how do you manage to do to 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 do that? You mentioned about apnea. Yes. How does that help you? Yes, thank you, Alex. It's re really very uh, technical question and very nice question. For the second, given that I believe the only uh, uh, influence factor related to precisely. A deployed clip is that the motion of the heart during the respiratory cycle. So we in for the second clip, I would prefer to uh, reduce the tidal burden a bit, and then you know that doing the second clip is quite uh, is, is quite easy, quite faster when you have a uh, to when you did you did dive the, into the left ventricle, you open the clip and you pull back, and then you will have the whole slip on the arm. So to do the precise precisely clipping, I would reduce tidal volume to, uh, you know, mitigate the influence of the re a re during the repository cycle. And especially if, if we de deploy the clip, the first clip medially, and we deploy the second clip laterally, and even I can, I will stop hold the breeze. And then, you know, the heart will not move 
and you can do the precisely clipping. So by using adjusting the, the, the respiratory cycle, that would be uh, to, to improve the clipping uh, uh, position uh, precisely. Right, you raise a very uh, important uh, useful trick because uh, when you keep the patient apneic, the, usually the clips will move more medial. So if your second clip is lateral to the first clip, then just uh, stopping the ventilator for a while, then the, 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 the clip will naturally move more medial and therefore closer to the first clip, right? Is that, is that, that, that's a yes. very good trick. Yeah. Um, the third question uh, is uh, I want to uh, raise. It's about um, uh, in some case, this case, we see that Adam uh, doing it like with zero difficulties is he's doing it right very smoothly like it's it's no no challenge at all but we know that it's because of his experience sometimes it's just uh, grasping is difficult especially with cases like this with a wide gap you know uh, is there any tips and tricks you can share with us uh, Yusuke when there is uh, difficulties in, in grasping a uh, patient with wider gap, grasp you cannot do the, the grasping at the same time how, how do you how do you deal with those situations Thank you, Alex. So also uh, it's effective using the apnea method. And also I will uh, give the patient to the more PEEP uh, ventilator uh, system with the PEEP, PEEP method. So PEEP maybe five to 10, uh, the coaxial gap will reduce. So I will use the PEEP method first. And also I will check the uh, uh, posterior leaflet uh, Reflect uh, angle. So if the posterior reflect angle is very like uh, uh, standing, so we we must use a uh, minus knob to to mm. to clip position uh, to the more aortic hugger position. So and uh, if we if it's difficult again, so we will use uh, independent uh, grasping method. So maybe. Uh, my 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 uh, personal uh, experience. I will start with the anterior reflet grasping and uh, going to the uh, uh, re posterior reflet grasping. Okay. Is there any particular reason that you will grasp the anterior leaflet first? I mean, is that the strategy for functional MR case? You grasp the anterior first. Is there any particular re uh, reason yeah. for that? Yeah. So. Well, ephemeral cases, so posterior reflet grasping is uh, mainly, uh, I, I think that the case of uh, difficulty is uh, uh, almost time to the posterior reflet. So I start uh, easier one and uh, difficult one second. Right, right. I, I really like your strategy of, you know, uh, doing the minus knob so, so that the when you are tackling a, a very tattered posterior leaflet because the we, we need the, the to create a little bit of uh, aortic hugging uh, in order to 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 grasp the posterior leaflets sometimes and and uh, uh, that's a very really good trick indeed um can i can i just ask one more question to adam before i go to didier so this case we see seems that there's a cleft right there's an indentation between uh, I mean, P3, P2, right? So in case like that, how do you, you know, preventing, you know, opening that gap? And if you, you really, what, what are the difficulties that you may encounter in the case with a, with a deep indentation adjacent to the site of uh, grasping? Yes, um, because according to the image, sometimes it's not really crap, it's just indentation. And to avoid to, te to tether apart the, the indentation, I would prefer the long arm clip probably will uh, have the the to avoid the the opening of the cleft the the indentation. So for that situation, I would prefer the on long arm clip, which that because the the clipping the clip uh, uh would exist the leaflet uh, the the coda insertion. So therefore, we are not we would not we can avoid the part. But sometimes when we are too much close to the indentation and we throw the MR become worse, and then we will move away, partly, uh, shortly away from the indentation, and then to do the clipping to see whether or not the, the, the indentation would, MR would be reduced. So I, I don't have no particular technique, but with long arm clip is my strategy to avoid uh, that condition. And sometimes I notice that uh, the, 
you, you adjust the clip arm orientation very carefully. Sometimes just make a little bit of uh, adjusting the clip arm orientation that you can, um, you know, uh, uh, get the clips, posterior clip arms a bit away from the indentation. And, and that may help sometimes the one millimeter uh, adjustment yeah. may, may help, right? So that's <laughs> a very good case. Thank so Dita, uh, the, the, the most difficult question has to, has to leave uh, left for you. Uh, what kind of mitral anatomy do you think is would be not suitable for tear? And we may have to consider other option. Yeah, it's uh, definitely a difficult question because it's. Uh, I have to say that we may keep a lot of uh, anatomies, but what we have to avoid is to uh, leave a residual MR that is too significant because it may impact survival of the patient. So. When do we think that we're not going to get a good result? Uh, for instance, if we have two tefer leaflet with a very, very short posterior mitral leaflet, if we have a very small anatomy, and uh, apart from the regurgitation, we leave a high gradient with a residual mitral stenosis, this is going to impact the functional capacity of the patient. So very small anatomy is the classified ones, uh, extremely commissural uh, prolapse or, or gaps uh, are not most of the time suitable uh, for a, a mitral clip. If we have multiple jets and we're not sure that we're gonna end up with a, a, a nice uh, result, this may be uh, extremely difficult. And these uh, could be options for, uh, could be indications for other options than uh, H2H uh, repair. And um, as we are exchanging uh, tips and tricks, uh, maybe uh, I wanted to propose in terms of, sometimes when it, it becomes challenging to grasp the leaflets, uh, Yusuke has proposed that Tarzan technique with the uh, differential uh, grasping of the leaflets. This is one of the features of the G4. Uh, uh, but we can also try to approximate the leaflets or to minimize the movement of the leaflets by some heart uh, rhythm control, whether it be through rapid pacing or adenosine. These are additional uh, tricks that may be useful uh, during the procedure. But I like the way that all these trips, uh, tricks have been, have been proposed. But even so, it's sometimes we are not going to end up with a good result. And uh, as I said, small anatomies, eccentric commissural jets, multiple jets, uh, high risk of high residual gradient, maybe this, uh, or on the opposite, extremely large caps, these are not good candidates for tier. Thank you, Didier. It's really a very uh, uh, insightful uh, sharing. And uh, with that, it, uh, with that comment coming in about the uh, difficulties in tear in some patient, I think it's timely to have uh, to invite you again, Dida, to share with us on the next talk, which is about uh, TMVR, transcutter mitral replacement, key, key principles and challenges and data. Thank you, Dida. Okay. So uh, let me drive you uh, through the next five minutes through this. Uh, uh, new options that could be TMVR. And um, after that, we have one question coming from the audience that we may address. So what are the key principles, challenges? And uh, so TMVR has some uh, promises in the sense that it may mimic what we uh, achieve with TAVI, with a uh, wire over the wire procedure, a stented procedure. Uh, it's more, it could be more angio-based procedures. Uh, we could imagine that one device could fit all anatomies, more predictability in terms of uh, residual regurgitation and less recurrence of regurgitation. And at last, it could be easier and more uh, easy uh, to uh, to teach uh, to uh, the overall uh, cardiology and uh, uh, um, surgical community. So these are the premises. Uh, so why is that uh, important? Because as we discussed, there are some situations in which uh, some anatomies in which we leave residual mitral regurgitation after tear, and this is going to impact the functional capacity as well as the uh, rehospitalization rate and more importantly survival of the patient. So if we think that we're going to leave a moderate to severe regurgitation, this may be a good option, a good indication for a TMVR. Uh, and uh, as we have discussed, there are some challenges in terms of, uh, of an anatomical uh, aspect of the mitral valve that could not be suitable uh, for a tear. And we all have faced that. We are the, the topic today is functional mitral regurgitation, but the mitral valvular uh, complex is really uh, a different from one patient to the other one. The etiology could be different, the amount of calcium, the mitral valve area, the extent of the disease, anything could impact the ability to guarantee a good result for our patient. 
So uh, this is not a, an exhaustive list, but you can see that uh, there are several factors that could be uh, considered just to uh, propose uh, TMVR for our patients, whether it be uh, MAC, uh, calcified leaflets, fibrotic leaflets, a high gradient at baseline, uh, clefts, we've discussed that, extremely restrictive and uh, short my, uh, posterior mitral leaflet, multiple regurgitant gest, and we, uh, we can't zip the entire mitral uh, annulus, uh, mitral valve. So these are uh, uh, indications for TMVR. And at last, I would say that imaging, if we are not uh, able to get a good imaging quality, this may impact the final result that we, we, uh, we end up with. So there are challenges with TMVR. The first one is to anchor properly. The second is the size of the mitral valve that is quite large. So it, uh, the, the TMVR devices are quite bulky. Uh, for the time being. And at last, there is that risk of uh, LDOT uh, obstruction. And as a consequence, uh, despite multiple devices that have been utilized, the failure rate, the screening failure rate for TMVR today is very high. And so we are still learning. Uh, we There is a need to improve in terms of comprehension of what is a suitable anatomy for TMVR and potentially in improving the technology to uh, fit a broader range of patients. So LVOT is one of the key issues, key reason for screening failure. And I've been identified some uh, uh, risk factors that are listed here. If you have a small LVOT diameter at baseline, a septal bulge, a very dynamic left ventricle, a hypertrophic left ventricle with a high systolic function, a large, very large and open automitral ang angle. Uh, if you use a device that is going to flare or protrude quite, quite importantly into the left ventricle, these are risk factors for LDOT obstruction. So uh, this is really the uh, the, the very uh, early phase of that experience, but you can see that devices, as for instance, the, the ten, Tendine, have uh, gathered close to 1,000 patients. So we are try, starting to understand what are the, uh, the suitable, the most suitable patients and how to overcome some limitations like the risk of LDOT obstruction. And uh, if we think about, and this is going to be one uh, the final slide, if we think about the overall uh, clinical outcomes, so we are still in the learning phase. The patients that have been treated are extremely high-risk patients, and this uh, really correlates with that uh, high uh, mortality at two years because this is really, for the time being, indicated for high uh, to high risk to inoperable patients, and the bulk of comorbidities is going to impact the survival of this, this patient. So we've understood the key principles, the promises, the challenges, and for the time being, the clinical outcomes for uh, TMVR, but work in progress, we can be optimistic for the, for the future. So thank you. And as I, as I said, that there is one question from it, uh, Pilai. Uh, it may be for you, Adam. It's about the use of NTW in this case. Do you think that we could use two NTW for these patients? Uh, for me, uh, if I can use the, if there is no contraindication for using the long arm clip, I would prefer to use the XTW given that I can, you know, increase the cooptation area at, at most comparing to the NT. W uh, NT system, and also with the NT W system or R system, we can I can further to decrease the AP diameter. From the image, there are a lot of published data showing that uh, with long arm clip, you probably can shorten the AP diameter, and also to remodel the the mitral annulus, which may you know reshape the the annulus and to prevent further dilatation of the mitral annulus. I think to treat the functional MR, one of the key issues is that we can prevent for while the left ventricle due to the genetic issue or due to the, some other uh, issue, the myocardial issue, that the left ventricle might might get progressive dilated, and then we can prevent during that progression the MR will not occur. So I would prefer XTW if there is no contraindication. But I also agree with that. With, with two NTWCs clip, the MR probably can uh, still can be treated very well. We still can have a very good reduction in MR severity to, to trivial immunoma. 
just a quick comment adding to that is that uh, this case, I think there's a wide gap to begin with. And that make the NTW maybe a little bit less favorable because it's the, unless you do independent grasping, it's sometimes difficult with that to grasp both leaflets, even sometimes with independent grasping, if you're using NT. Uh, uh, in, in this case, with the gap. So I think this case have a particular point. Not just we can use XT, but also there is a point which is the Y gap that suggests maybe XT is a better choice. So I think uh, we have come to the end of this webinar. Uh, if there's no further questions from the audience, uh, I would like to close the webinar. So I would like to thanks again all my colleagues. Uh, it's okay. Didia and Adam for their excellent case presentation and uh, and and their talks and the uh, excellent sharing of many uh, uh, important points uh, in terms of tier and also of the TMBR procedures. And the key things that we, I I think we have learned today is that uh, uh, we have uh, now understand how to choose suitable patients, especially in terms of the clinical factors and the mitral valve anatomy for tier. It's benefit of patients. Uh, to functional MR and what are the potential patients that uh, may not be suitable and then TMVR uh, may have a role as, uh, uh, in the near future. And also importantly, the tips and tricks about the technique uh, that we use both imaging and also the implantation technique uh, during the tier procedure with a beautiful cases demonstrating all these important points. So with that, I hope uh, all of us, uh, our audience here, would uh, have enjoyed this uh, wonderful webinar, and and uh, I, I hope that uh, you will enjoy uh, the future webinar uh, likewise. So thank you very much, and have a nice evening. And uh, see you all in Tokyo next year. Yeah, see you in Tokyo. Yeah, see you in Tokyo next year. Yeah. Bye. Thank you.